is a very, very heavy question over here. What is the right, proper way to learn? Yemarda Shulchan Aruch Hasidus. Is it to read and translate each word and sound like a robot? Or is it to read a few lines and talk it over with your Havrusa out loud? Or to write it down? And does it make a difference if it's Nigla or Hasidus? So this question usually Bacharim asks when they're older. I don't know who the, who the Bachar asks the questions. It's Al Bacharim, Sifta Bachar. But it's, it's a very important question. And I actually, if anyone is really interested in a long answer, so I have a friend of mine, Rabbi Heller, is a teacher in the Torah Shiral of Zal. He gave us uh, three hours, three shiurim, each one an hour explaining how, how you're supposed to learn. Spent three hours about it. About how to write with, he's talking only about nigla, but really, that regarding the last question, of it, is a difference nigla and chassidus? The answer is no. And this is the Rebbe's chiddush, that you have to learn nigla and just like nigla. So it's, a, it's three hours. I can, I can send whoever wants, I can send the audio of going on and on details of what's the proper way to learn. In short, the answer is a robot is obviously not, not ideal. You're supposed to read in every paragraph or every section, you're supposed to summarize. So ideally, summarizing can either be saying it over yourself, or you can write it, but you have to have clarity in what you're learning. And true, there are many people that read just like read and touch everywhere like a robot, and they don't have a proper understanding of what they're learning. It happens, especially it happens in, in Chassidus, it happens a lot more often than in Nigla, that in Chassidus a person uh, learns a whole maimer, a whole sicha, and then you ask him what's the point of the sicha, the maimer he doesn't know. It happened in Nigla as well, now as a bacher. I remember I once asked the Meshiv a question in the Gemara and Girsa. And the Meshav told me, you understand the Gemara before? I said, yeah, yeah, I understand everything just till then. So then he asked me, what does it mean before? So I, I told him what I thought, it, what it meant. He said, no, that's not what it means. So he ended up going back with me a whole daf of Gemara, a whole two amudim that I thought I read and understood that really I did not understand. I was just reading and touching each word for itself and it made sense to me. So he taught me a cloud that when you're learning, you have to stop and realize what's going on. What is the question? What is the answer? How is it an answer when there's a proof and so on? So that, that's the way you're supposed to be, and that's why for most Bakrim, especially younger Bakrim, it's very important to go to a shir, and in the shir you're taught what the meaning of, not just the title of the words, also the layout of what's going on, whether it's a sikha, a maimer, a gemara, a teisvis, to know what's going on. So it's not just, it's more, it's, a, it's, it's and you, we pick it up as you go along, as you go to classes more. More information also, there's a kundus of the Rebbe Rashad called Kundus Eis Achayim, and over there in the Pew Prokim, Chavav, Chavzayim, Chavches, Chavtes, he talks about the right, the right way of learning gemara as well, over there he also explains it, which my friend in the shir, he references to that as well. So that's in short the answer. Again, more variches. Come to me later. I can give you those shiur. When will Mashiach come? Hayoyim in bekerli tishmo. That's the famous answer of the Gemara of the Mashiach himself. I don't have any other answer. Huh? Other answer. Why when we go to the weddings do we wear nicer clothes than on Shabbos? So our question is who you're talking to. Uh, the further uh, second cousins and first cousins even, I also don't think they wear nicer clothes than they wear on Shabbos. It's usually the siblings of the Chos and Kala and the Chos and Kala themselves. So Bechlal, really the same thing applies to Yom Tiv. It says that on Yom Tiv you have to wear nicer clothes than on Shabbos because then according to the, the basic of the halacha, there's no mitzvah of Simcha on Shabbos. Huh? That's how we have Seder on Shabbos. Because there's no Simcha on Shabbos. There's Simcha. No, makes sense, but uh, it says, Piku de Hashem Yishorim is Amche Lev, so it doesn't fit with what you're saying. Apoponim, there's no mitzvah to be, Alpi Aloche, there's no mitzvah to be happy on Shabbos, in Pashtus. There's the Rebbe Azichis in explaining deeper that there is an element of sin, but in Pashtus, Shabbos is a mitzvah of Oinik, of enjoying Shabbos and having a Shabbos to meal and COVID, but there's no mitzvah of Simcha. Versus Yom Tiv, there's a mitzvah of Simcha. And that's one of the reasons why we're supposed to wear sh sh nicer clothes on Yom Tiv. Most people, in honor of Yom Tiv, they end up buying a new suit, a new hat, something, will have Yom Tiv. So the Chayr al Derech Zeh Aichasen is the element of Simchas Chosam Vekalo. There's a whole mitzvah with Sameach Zeh Chosam Vekalo. So by Pashas, that would be the reason, I would assume, that connected to a wedding, there's another, there's a, a Indian to bring um, uh, nicer clothes. What does Chasidish mean? This question, if you ask ten mashpim, you'll probably get ten answers. And if you ask one mashpia ten times, you'll get another ten answers. 
Um, it's a very hard question to answer, to define it in short. In my simple definition as of now is Hasidish is someone that's sincerely working on himself. Someone that's trying to make himself closer to the Eibishter. He's always trying to work on himself. He's not uh, satisfied with the status quo, with the way he is right now. He always is working on himself to get closer to Hashem. Taking upon himself more achlat estoivis and sur meran and he's constantly working on himself. My understand. Should can Bakrim go to a Trump rally in order to do Miftoy? <laughs> Who said it's too late? Who knows what's going on? Oh. <laughs> it might be another one. <laughs> It'll be a Trump demonstration, not a rally. <laughs> no, Bakrim should not be going to Trump rally to do it. To do Miftoy and Bakrim should be sitting and learning the whole time. Bakrim is ready to paint as man. Time where any of these do time for the time, and he has the opportunity to go to the time, then yes. But Al Khatkhila, Abakha should be sitting and learning the entire time and say it. What if it's Friday, then yes. It's Friday, then yes. Friday afternoon, are you going up with time then? Then yeah, then it will make sense. Then you should go get him a and start working on himself. Who made the time on Friday? You just ask that question. Stop wasting time. It's not the question. The question is ideal, it's the right thing. Abach is not doing it anyway, so, so then there's a lot of questions, what could he be doing? That's what not was the question. Time on Friday, like, what, what was because that was the time there was a break over. Oh. So in your, in your personal time, the Rebbe said, give up for your own time and do move to it. It's a story, the Rebbe said, the, the, the time for Avatah Sayyadis is, is Friday after Chatzos. The Rebbe said that expression. Why doesn't the trampoline need a marker? I don't know that not. A maki means a border around your fence. I don't know that, that uh, a trampoline is not a fakerta. According to Allah, I, I would suggest that a trampoline needs a maki. The last Rabbi Zirkin will probably say that you're not have a trampoline in the first place. But uh, he claims that uh, Rabbi Zirkin says that skiing is also al pi Allah. Because skiing is uh, putting yourself in danger. And I would say that trampolines are just as close. Yeah, America, right? Well, trampolines can hurt you. Right? So, so, so the and without a market, it's even more dangerous. So I would, I would assume that according to, I mean, most trampolines today, you can offer, you can buy them and have a, 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 a kind of net around it. That's enough. A pastor is supposed to do that. And the Abdul, even according to, according to the law, if you want to get insurance for your house, so one of the questions I ask you for insurance in your house is if you have a trampoline. I don't have a trampoline in my house because I, for insurance it's going to cost me more. You can write whatever you want, obviously, but, uh, but one of the reasons is if you have a trampoline, then the insurance is going to charge you more because they know that Al Piteva there's going to be more access to Khmer in your household. So it's a clear, it's a clear uh, and a tashes when there's a net, it's a, it's a lot less, uh, less problem. So what's with the barn there? What? On the front porch, whatever you want to call it. The ledge over there? Yeah. It's not really a place where you're both supposed to meant to hang out, but maybe, yeah, but I don't know if it's above the bush is less than 10 Tvachim. If you fall onto the bush, it's going to be... Won't be so, huh? Allah, you just put cement in the back there. Man, if you'll stand and fall flat on your face, it'll also hurt, yeah? Allah, you just put cement over there. Huh? What is Hasidus' take on Murphy's law? Murphy's law means that whenever, whatever, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. The classical example is if you have a bread and butter and it'll fall, it'll always fall on the side with the butter. So I think that's even more dirty. <laughs> See, this is take is that's not true. I mean, that particular example, some people say that it's true because the gravity of the side of the butter is heavier, so that pulls it to that side, if that's true. But the, the, the ideal of Murphy's law. That toe. Huh? What if you have an ingrown toenail and you always stub that toe? So that's, that can be explained psychologically because you're always extra, whatever you're extra careful about, that ends up being the worst situation. Yeah, the People that are the most afraid of Corona, they get the Corona in their community the first ones, right? <laughs> Happened in uh, no places like that. So, Bechalifin, but Chsidis' stake is no. Whatever, whatever could go wrong does not go wrong. The Abish should develop. And if the Abish wants things to work out good, they'll work out good. If not, not. Bachar wrote a question I can't read. I'll read the first few words. I have, if you have something, to end something, you and Mim, you private. But what's the answer? What's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite flavorizer? <laughs> I can't read it, so. How can I do, what, sorry, what can I do to build a deep and strong Rotsin for Mashiach? So there's two answers to this Barbara's question. Question number one is, is that whatever you really have a strong, a deep and strong Rotsin for, 
you want Mashiach. Whatever you want, whether it's the biggest taiva, the biggest avera, or the biggest good thing. When Mashiach comes, you're going to have the best of everything. When Mashiach comes, you're going to have whatever you want in the best possible way. You're going to have the biggest tanugim. So the Mela, you already have a, a, a deep and strong rotsim for Mashiach. Just you call your deep and strong rotsim something else. But really, whatever you want, when Mashiach comes, you'll have even better. So that's answer, just, it's, so, so in other words, answer number one is just to switch your understanding to realize that when Mashiach comes, it'll be good, 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 and the Mela, you want that. And answer number two, in other words, is to learn in Yoni Gula Mashiach. When you, you learn about in Yoni Gula Mashiach, so that develops in you a strong rotsim for, for, um, for Mashiach. Uh, <laughs> we learn in Hasidus that when the etzim of your neshama gets a chiddush in the sifta de rekiah, you get it down here. And we also learn that they learn Torah different up there. So why don't the different ways to learn come down here? The question is, uh, I think, a, a misunderstanding. But I'm not sure exactly what the In the Sifta de Rekia, your Neshama learns Torah differently. And when you get a, when you're Mechadish Echidish down here, your Neshama Lamaila benefits from it. And there are in Yonim that your Neshama Lamaila sends messages to down here, but you don't get it the same kind of way. So it, it, the Bakr seems to be asking that when the Sifta de Rekia, your, your Neshama is learning Torah in a spiritual kind of way, why, are, why does, not, does, not, does that not come down to you? The answer is because most of what your neshama uh, 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 senses or feels in Mesif de Rekia is beyond you, and it's not sharp for you to relate to that. It gives you messages in different kinds of ways. It is, uh, it is sometimes there's a baskel, the neshama, Rabbi uh, Shema mentioned today, a uh, baskel, not Rabbi Shema, sorry. Who said, Eilam Abdiyas Melbein Shal Teirah? Ah, was Dil said it? Eilam Abdiyas Melbein Shal Teirah. The Neshama hears a baskel. But Abacher doesn't necessarily, your, your Neshama and your Guf doesn't hear that baskel Kipshutai. You don't even hear the, the Teichin. You hear Abbas of Seder to learn more. So the way the Neshama senses things, the Milo, the way it sends it, the message down to you and your body is very different the way you get it. And that's why you don't hear the Chidushim that are going on in the mind. What is Bainanus? Is it Shaykh to Bokhrim? If you don't do it, are you missing something in Aveda Sasha? So we'll answer the second two questions first because they're easier. Yes, it is Shaykh to Bokhrim. And if you don't do it, yes, you are missing something in Aveda Sasha. Now, the harder question what is this Bainanus? So, here's a Rabbi, we have a Mashpi on the Yeshiva, Rabbi Avram Katz. And uh, we have the Swiss to have in our Yeshiva. He's from Ingenheim and Hashem as well. He actually wrote a book about his Bainanus. He wrote a book about a practical guide had a daven by Rikhus. And over there, he goes through step by step in a very clear kind of way. He was, uh, he learned by Rabbi Itchamer Gorari, he's a Mashpia Montreal. Rabbi Itchamer Gorari was a, was a, a, a Bokhar in 770. And in, he had a lot of personal guidance from the Rebbe in Yechidis about how to, and Abed Hashem and davening as well. So a lot of what he heard from the Rebbe, he told Rabbi Katz to put it in his book. So in short, the answer is a simple, there, there's many levels that he explains over there in the book. You go through it, he has many different levels. But the simple thing of his Bedros means to, in your mind, think over an Indian exodus. Whatever you learned in the Mimer, to think it over in your own words, so to speak. Try to hazard whatever you learned in the mind.